So as gastroenterologists, we perform a variety of, of procedures and treat many different conditions. Uh, in the lower gastrointestinal tract, we do colonoscopies quite a bit. We screen for colon cancer. We uh, diagnose disorders that can cause diarrhea, gastrointestinal bleeding, deal with constipation. In the upper gastrointestinal tract, in the esophagus, in the stomach, in the intestine, uh, we treat acid reflux. We uh, deal with swallowing disorders that's called dysphagia. Uh, we treat peptic ulcer disease as well. And uh, we also do procedures that involve the biliary tract and the bile ducts as well too. GERD is a, is a huge part of our practice, which we call gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD. The way that we're built is we have a, a nice tight, uh, what's called the lower esophageal sphincter, a valve that kind of wraps around the food pipe called the esophagus and the stomach. And it prevents acid or other contents from coming up into uh, the food pipe. I think when we talk about lifestyle factors that can help, the, the, the two biggest things are avoidance of late night eating, meaning eating within three hours of going to bed. And of course, weight gain is going to be something that uh, is going to uh, augment and precipitate uh, acid reflux as well. So obviously uh, being, uh, being trim and being at an ideal weight is uh, beneficial for many reasons in life and acid reflux prevention is one of them. If you have acid reflux, and the therapies that you're doing at home or on your own, whether that be over-the-counter medicines, whether that be lifestyle modifications such as not eating late at night, trying to follow a special diet, raising the head of your bed. If those aren't working, then you definitely need to call your doctor to see if there's other uh, treatments that you need. Now, those might need prescription medicines. Those may need. Those may involve being referred for an endoscopy to see if you have changes of acid reflux in your food pipe, in your esophagus, to see if you have a hiatal hernia or another anatomic problem, to see if you have Barrett's esophagus, which is the precancerous condition in the esophagus. That's going to be very important if you're not getting better on simple therapies on, on your own. If, if a patient has Barrett's esophagus, what happens is the normal lining of the esophagus over the years can change from being a regular squamous epithelium to what we call intestinal epithelium. So in essence, it's really tissue that grows there that shouldn't be there. The way we treat Barrett's esophagus is, for one, we have patients take what's called a proton pump inhibitor, which is uh, the strongest anti-reflux and anti-acid medicine uh, that is on the market. That is going to do the best job at preventing all of the reflux that somebody has had from being so acidic, so it's not continuously damaging the esophagus. Certain patients with Barrett's esophagus may qualify to have a procedure called radiofrequency ablation where we can actually with an, with an endoscope perform an endoscopy and use a little catheter or even a balloon that can actually ablate or burn off the Barrett's esophagus. I love being a gastroenterologist because I think it affords you the, the opportunity to not only see patients in an office setting and help patients there, but also uh, to do procedures and to do things that we love to do, colonoscopies and upper endoscopies, which are not always fun for patients to go through, but we enjoy doing and we enjoy helping patients as well. So I think it's a great combination of, uh, of, of, of helping people in an office setting and doing procedures as well. And there's a lot of conditions that we see and we treat that we can give immediate help to patients for.